Hey, happy Thursday, everybody. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. And I'm going to show you the latest information on what's going on in the tropics because now the European is showing that we have not only one, but potentially a double banger, two potential tropical waves that might form up into something tropical. I don't know if it's going to be a depression, a tropical storm, or a hurricane. Now, what I'm thinking is that it will come through as something very weak, mainly because we have still a lot of shear that's going to be coming down in this trough. But the first one is going to be weak. The one after that is potentially going to be strong. I'm going to show you why in this video, why I have that assumption. I'm not going to just show you a weather model run. I'm going to show you the data that goes behind it so if you've never been here before make sure you subscribe i'm all year along with my weather forecasting and i will keep you updated matter of fact my kids last day of school i do do homeschool is tomorrow so after that we can start doing updates whenever we need them throughout the day in the tropics now you can see this here from the data i'm going to show you gfs i'm going to show you euro as well so you can see that it is trending and what each one of these models sees but first you got to go by the data but you can see right around the time of the 13th and beyond we're going to go through a transition from a positive pna towards a negative pna where it goes on at high ridge at the same time if you take a closer look you can see that we're going to stay into that negative pna for a long time all the way well into july you can see the exact same thing on the European model, that as you get that high ridge and that deep trough, that it is going to sit there and change right around that time also. And also confirming that we're going to stay in that pattern all through the rest of June into July. But what's going to change is we are going into a different pattern. So we're going to go into a positive PNA pattern, a Pacific North American pattern. We have still this big high pressure of heat rolling through. Why you got this cooler air coming through on the eastern side of the lower 48? Matter of fact, latest update shows that GFS was correct on that. The euro has taken away that second dip of cold air. Even National Weather Service has taken away to where it's a lot less of below average temperatures rolling through. We're really going to go to a high ridge where it's going to be peaking like this and a deep trough peaking like this. If you remember a while back, I told you when you get a high ridge on the opposite side of the jet stream, opposite side of the country, you will get an extreme trough as well. And that's what we're looking into. So when this first tropical wave comes through, we're going to be getting all this shear. We're going to be getting some favorable environment, low average wind shear in this direction where we have our upper level high swinging things around. But soon it's going to change. So when that first wave comes through, that one probably will get demolished. Just bring some rainfall. But after that is really going to add up because we're going to go into a negative PNA, a negative Pacific North American pattern where we get a trough and then a ridge in this direction. And this will steer everything just like this everything that comes in from the caribbean will go in this category or turn out now whether this is going into a high ridge or a trough is right around the area that we have a lot of lift a lot of convection in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to grow then after that we're still going on a break well into july maybe a couple things coming to the eastern pacific one forming up maybe in the MDR, something very weak, but that is it until we go through the middle of July. Now to show you some more information, that second dip of cold air in your AO, your Arctic Oscillation, according to the Euro, you can see the latest information that it has taken that away. Matter of fact, if you take a look at the GFS, it did show that last time. So I know GFS overdoes it on some of these storms that form up and it's made like that it's made to be a little bit over exaggerated just so we know what could happen just like the euro is made to be a little bit less exaggerated just to try and be as accurate as possible without any hype but unfortunately when that happens things form up close to home and you won't get the information until you literally have just a few days but that is important because without that second dip of colder air coming through that second trough will be a weaker trough maybe coming through the center of the lower 48 not all the way to the south and the southeast so that would not shear away the second portion of this tropical waves that's moving through it would weaken it down maybe to a tropical depression or a tropical storm definitely won't get no hurricane because of all the wind shear but it definitely could form up into something so now i'm going to show you the latest trends what's been coming out in the model data and i also will show you the ensembles what your more likely outcome will be with the GFS still showing on your Zero Z last night, early this morning, on your balloon data that you still have past five days, you get all that low pressure building up over here by the Central American Gyre and eventually does bring out something by the 13th 
as we start to go into this high ridge pattern and allows that to come forward still showing somewheres in the gulf of mexico i see people asking hey is this coming to florida is this coming to texas this coming to louisiana we're not even sure yet this could easily be a tropical wave that sits around here by the yucatan and just rotates around and bring a lot of flooding still too far to take it as accuracy i'm just trying to show you the data and what's trending and i'll keep you updated as we get closer as national hurricane center comes on board and starts talking about it but in this run it shows by the 15th and 16th just bottles around towards louisiana towards texas and then another one gets a chance to form up afterwards before it starts losing his opportunity we come into a lot of favorable environment a lot of lift in our atmosphere for these thunderstorms to grow you can see on the next run the 6 z after five days already showing the chance of a surface low to form see how it stays weak it's hitting a lot of this wind shear and really your most favorable area is over here by the bay of campeche at this time as this keeps revolving around precipitation bringing flooding maybe a depression forming up maybe that's about your worst case scenario from what i can see from that first part of the wave as that moves around that would bring a lot of heavy flooding and that would bring some slight winds but i don't see this being strong enough even though we got 85 to 90 degree temperatures going on in the gulf in the caribbean the northern gulf is very weak also on the coast of florida so anything that forms up should stay rather weak same thing with canadian you can see five days getting some kind of surface low forming up in the center of the gulf staying rather weak as it moves across that right there is actually believable it's all about timing but i think we could still get a tropical depression maybe a very weak tropical storm as that moves across so as we take a look at the euro model still showing that first wave will stay around central american gyre whether it gets a surface low in the eastern pacific or in the caribbean or the bay of campeche is still unknown but showing with all the shear involved that it will remain weak as that moves through and then maybe come back later and form up which side we don't know yet that's still too far away but just show you the regular the deterministic of the euro is showing something later on now when you go by the euro ensemble the control member of the european model after you go nine to ten days away showing that same thing that we just saw on the deterministic model this one is a long range model and you can see that right after that right after that when your shear starts weakening down from that trough and we change patterns agreeing just like the gfs has been screaming that we have a surface low a strong storm forming up potentially in the gulf of mexico and maybe still a one two punch we've been showing a potential one two punch for quite some time now the only good news so far is showing any kind of damage and winds not showing any you might get some high 40s moving through northern bahamas as it pulls away and maybe turn in the 50s if it was to play out none of these weather models ever play out like it shows two weeks in advance an area of a hot spot might be correct but the actual run very few times have I had that happen. But you can see here your precipitation. This is your deterministic. This is within the next 10 days. And when you look at the, the area, the amount, how accurate this is compared to the control member of the euro, about the same thing in the same amount of time. And when those waves start pushing through, this is going to start bringing a lot of potential heavy rainfall. Maybe some flooding towards northeastern Mexico for the Yucatan all in the western caribbean from jamaica over and in the bahamas in southern florida right at 10 days so take this you know with a grain of salt because this is going to move around i will keep you up there i know y'all hate that term take it with a grain of salt but this is literally 10 days away i'm just trying to show you a pattern this is going to change a little bit but it's going to be bottled up and you can see that with the low pressure it's just going to be a big area for a lot of thunderstorms to grow a lot of favorable environment we're going into now you can see the latest information on your potential velocity anomaly according to the gfs your favorable environment your unfavorable environment right in our region still getting that bowing out to the west a little bit but still showing we have a lot of convection all the way to the 13th and 14th still a possibility to something to form 
Then you can see after that, obviously this is gonna go into the Eastern Pacific and a little bit for the Eastern Caribbean, maybe the Western MDR. You can also see with the European for a trending purpose that you can see that bowing out coming in on it. You can also see all the way to the 13th. This is actually over us and showing before it leaves, we actually have it coming over us again, maybe at the very end of June, right around the late teens or the 20s. And you can see that wave still like the GFS showed at the Eastern Caribbean in the MDR, nothing really coming out of that. So maybe the beginning and maybe towards the end. In between, there's going to be a lot of shear. Some more information, when you look at the chances for a tropical depression, you can see here with the euro as you go towards 10 days, more than likely it's going to bottle up that first set of tropical waves over here by the Yucatan, by the Bay of Campeche, maybe get a surface low in the Eastern Pacific, and then maybe carry into the Gulf of Mexico. Because once you go past 10 days, you can see it starts favoring that northern push right into the Gulf. Showing that right when you go around June 16th, right when you go around 10 days, that Favorable environment that bends back towards us, showing potentially low pressures will form until then. But after that, that's when it's going to start strengthening up for your chances for something that's strong to come into the Gulf and going west northwest. So here's the update. I waited for the 6Z to come out a little bit closer to the Gulf as we go by five days. You see it is still showing over here that something can form up early, but it's only one out of 30. 3% 3 chance, not going to happen. But you can see later, still agreeing that something form up later, still going towards Louisiana, and still showing multiple chances later, not sooner. So as we go by the ensembles and see what they say, you can see here with the Euro that it is showing that we have something by the 17th, could favor right there north of the Yucatan and go west, northwest with some growth. Then eventually maybe weakening down pretty quickly, of course, could we still have that shear? It all depends how strong that trough is coming in and when is this pattern going to change. Because you can see on your shear that you have a lot of above average shear pushing through while you get that upper level high. Your below average shear is over here in the Yucatan at that moment. That would be the best place for any kind of formation as we go through June all the way to the 16th. Shortly after this, you're going to start losing this shear and it's going to become favorable. So you can see here with the GEFS, also showing chances by the 13th and 14th. Still could form up something. I'm sure it'd be something weak because of all the shear if the first wave does. And showing that second wave will be something bigger, that better chance for growth on that. It will show that somewhere around the 16th through the 18th and 19th is something we need to pay attention to. Also showing that it's Still above average shear over here, still keeping it something weak if it does push forward, but it does show that it has a bigger area of below average wind shear where it could bottle up a little bit more towards southern Florida, then get weakened down by all this above average shear that would be hitting on it. But it does show it has a chance all the way to the 18th and 19th for below average shear to hit on it and something could form up in this region according to the GFS. And GFS swings that right around into that favorable environment, maybe forming up something close towards southwestern Florida, a tropical depression, bringing some rainfall and some, and some slight winds, worst case scenario. With this year, it would not be able to be vertically stacked. It would get demolished. And it shows you just sits there the whole time getting sheared, staying weak, but also shows as we go towards the later teens when it moves across very weak that we do get this moment where the shear will become less in the environment and something could form up in the late teens, early 20s before we go into an unfavorable moment. You can also see our sea surface temperatures are very warm. We're rolling 85 and some pockets even hitting 90. A lot in the Western Caribbean. This is where our deep ocean heat content is as well. But as you go towards the northern side of the Gulf of Mexico, it's still a little bit cooler than all of this. So if something did form up late, it wouldn't produce anything. But you can see it is above average. We are above average in this region, just not really along the coast. Now, we'll keep you updated. So far, National Hurricane Center only has a those next tropical waves moving forward towards eastern caribbean by the 9th in just a few days and 72 hours and that other tropical wave more likely going right towards nicaragua and honduras 
and potentially going towards a Yucatan following that stream of moisture. Still showing nothing in the next seven days from National Hurricane Center. I expect this to change within a couple of days just to keep a notice. Global Tropics is still showing all that bottle up from that Western Caribbean into the Yucatan, the Bay of Campeche, and the Eastern Pacific for the next couple of weeks. It's still showing that. Also still showing that after we get past this anomaly that we are going into unfavorable environment for ourselves all the way until the middle of July. So after we get done with all this, whatever this may be, we're going to be on a break for the beginning of our hurricane season. It's going to be a later start. And that has been the update on the weather forecast of what's going on with the tropics. I will keep you updated. I will post again for tomorrow. So make sure you do hit that subscribe button. Make sure you click the bell. That way you get all the updates. Otherwise, you'll just get an occasional one and you won't know what the newer information is. Thank you to everyone that's been sharing and liking the video, spreading the information. I appreciate every single one of y'all. Y'all are really the ones that are helping and saving lives. God bless every single one of you. I do appreciate you. But before you go, 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. I wish the best for every single one of y'all. I did post my community tab what happened yesterday. It was unbelievable. We actually had an unexpected outbreak. We had tornado reports in Michigan. We had Maryland got attacked with almost 20. It was just a recycling, strong, powerful storm. And unfortunately, I did hear that we did lose someone in Michigan, a two-year-old child, a tree fell in her home. So God bless all of you in, in, at home. I do hope that y'all do get some peace somehow from this. I do wish the best from every single one of y'all. Now remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I always hope he keeps you safe, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen.